You may be aware that America has accumulated quite a few invasive species over the years. In this video, I plan to tell you about some that you may not know are invasive species. This is the most quirked up invasive species in America. So let's get this started. I want to start out with an honorable mention for possibly the least quirked up animal on this list. This is the obscure mealybug. It's this little loser ass bug that no one even noticed till the 1900s. We think it might be from South America. And its main thing is it just likes to eat grapes. I can't blame it. I do really just love the thought of like naming a animal obscure though. Like, oh, I don't know, it's weird. It, it's in the grass, it's kind of obscure. I, fuck it, that's its name. For our next animal, we're going on down to America's foot long dingle dong, Florida. Florida is well known for its invasive species, but here's one you don't know. Herpes monkeys. It's believed that there are currently three species of invasive monkeys in Florida. They are the rhesus macaque, the vervet monkey, and the squirrel monkey. The main one we're going to be talking about is also the most common is the rhesus macaque. It's believed that the bulk of the macaques in Florida currently descend from a group that was introduced by a man named Colonel Tui, who was a jungle boat captain in Florida, and he put out some monkeys to get people more excited for his tours. Some of the macaques may have also come from research facilities and zoos that were destroyed by hurricanes such as Hurricane Andrew. Most of these live in and around the Silver Springs State Park. You may be thinking, oh, what's the big deal? Monkeys are cute. The issue is that out of the thousand that they've caught of these, almost all of them have had herpes B virus, which is a deadly version of herpes when humans catch it, but they carry it asymptomatically. Colonies of these can also be found in South Carolina and Puerto Rico, where they've been able to do a lot of environmental damage by eating bird's eggs and destroying crops. The other two main monkey species in Florida are the vervet monkey and the squirrel monkey, which really hasn't been able to maintain a solid population due to them not doing very well in winter weather. And the vervet monkeys have a relatively stable population of around 40 members in different little colonies. Next up, we're going on down to Texas to get a little Hakuna matata e because Texas currently has an infestation of warthogs. That's right, the Chaparral Wildlife Management Area has had some little warthogs hanging around. They're even reproducing, as you can see here, we got one with four little piglets. A fun thing about warthogs I didn't know is these things live in burrows, so they're even harder to spot than a normal pig. Basically, it's believed that they can't interbreed with the feral hogs that are already in Texas, which is good, because the last thing you need is 30 to 50 feral warthogs going through your property. The positive note on the efforts to try and contain these is they taste good, and because they're an exotic species, there's no hunting regulations on them. So hopefully this situation will work out. Now get ready to squirm, because our next one up is a worm. It's the Amenthus. This is a worm that's native to East Asia, such as Taiwan. It's about two inches to eight inches long, and it's also known as the crazy worm, because it jumps around like this. The main issue with these is earthworms in total are not really native to America. Even the normal common earthworm you think of is actually from Europe. And a big issue is that they're changing the way our soil is, which is hurting native trees. These crazy worms are breeding really fast and it could speed up the issues of the soil changing. Our next section I'm just gonna call the whole ass fish store. The big issue is that people take home a fish and then it gets too big for their tank and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do with it. So they throw it in the river, which just is causing a whole ton of issues throughout the country at this point. We got Placosimuses digging holes and levees in places like Houston. The other big issue is that there's these fish that are being released that they just outcompete the native fish such as Oscars, uh, snakeheads, jewelfish, a lot of other cichlids, and also the lionfish, which is just destroying the area around Florida. <laughs> There's also this weird ass lake in Colorado now that's just filled with goldfish. Bottom line is, if you get a fish and you don't know how to take care of it, take it back to the store. Stop being a fucking dumbass. Next up, we got parrots. There are believed to be 25 species of parrots in the U.S. that have breeding colonies, and they're all invasive. At one point, the U.S. did have two breeding species of parrots. There was the Carolina parakeet, which was wiped out in the early 20th century by a breakout of Newcastle disease. And there was the thick-billed parrot, which was pushed out due to habitat loss. But it still lives in Mexico. A study from 2002 to 2016 found that about 60% of the parrot sightings were of either the monk parakeet, the red-crowned Amazon, or the nandy parakeet. Really, there is a little bit of a moral issue that wildlife conservationists are going through with these because some of these species are endangered in their home country, but they're flourishing out here where they don't have the same predators and where people aren't trying to sell them into the pet trade. The states where they're most common are like Florida, Texas, California, the kind of sun states. 
but there is also active populations in places like Chicago and New York. I'm not going to go over all the invasive species in this country, there are a lot more, and I don't think they're all quirky enough to be on this list, like even this rat that's dancing isn't quite quirky enough, but I hope you have a great day.